I will start my talk with something festive, something that we are known for and something that we love, the big Indian weddings. And what's that one distinctive feature of just about any Indian wedding? Almost always, it's the loud, blaring music. But have you ever noticed something interesting with this music? The farther you move away from the wedding venue, the more you only hear the bass, that thup thup music. You don't hear the vocals, you don't hear the guitars, you don't hear any other component of the music. You only hear this pounding bass. Have you ever wondered why? There is actually a very good reason behind this. You see, the bass has lower acoustic frequency, while the guitar and the vocals, they have higher acoustic frequency which means that with time, bass oscillates slower than the, than the guitars, which oscillates very fast. And this medium of propagation of sound, the air, the atmosphere, it is not able to respond to these quick vibrations. So what it does, it dampens the high, starts dampening the higher frequency guitars. And what ends up happening is after a distance, you are only left with the bass while all the guitar and the vocals, they have been eaten away by the air. Now surprisingly, something similar is unfolding in electronics as well. With the electronic chips that we put inside our mobile phone and computers, something similar is unfolding there as well. Let me explain you how. The most fundamental building block of any electronic chip that we put inside our phones or computer is a transistor. In the electronic chip, the transistor acts as a switch, which means it either allows the flow of electric current or it blocks the flow of electric current. When it allows the flow of electric current, at a very rudimentary level, it could be represented as a bit one. And when it blocks the flow of electric current, it could be represented as bit zero. And with the current advancement in technology, we are now able to cram billions of transistors, literally billions of transistors, on a chip which is of the size of your fingernail. And it has happened because the dimension of these transistors is extremely, extremely small. It's of the order of a nanometer. Just to give you an idea how big is a nanometer, between these two clicks, your fingernails have grown by one nanometer. That's the order of dimension that we are talking about. And because we are able to cram so many transistors on a, on a chip this big, per second, as a function of time, we are able to process a lot of ones and zeros, and that's why your chip, it has become extremely, extremely powerful. Its processing speed has increased exponentially. And as a result, you are able to make crystal clear video calls to your loved ones, play realistic video games, train artificial intelligence data, or upload very high quality memes on social media. But because we are switching so many ones and zeros, we have run into a similar kind of problem as the music of the Indian wedding. In the case of Indian wedding, the higher oscillations were being eaten away by the air, the medium of propagation. But in the case of electronics, because the oscillations between ones and zeros are so much, that the conventional medium of transportation for these electronic signals, the electronic interconnect, the electrical cable equivalent on a chip, it is eating away a lot of your data. So even though we are able to process a lot of data, we are not able to transmit it from point A to point B. And what's the use of this data? If you can process it, store it, but you cannot transmit it, there is no use for that data. So we have run into a problem. And the solution for the problem is something very interesting. A group of scientists and engineers decided that instead of using electrons, the electronic interconnects, what if we use photons? Yes, the same photons which are illuminating this stage right now. Why don't we use photons? So electronics can process all the data, but when you have to carry this data, we can use photons. After all, if Einstein is to be believed, 
nothing travels faster than the speed of light. Transfer of information could be very quick. Also, light has different colors. It has different wavelengths. So what it means is that we can imprint all the electronic information onto these different wavelengths, combine all these wavelengths together, and transmit them as a whole. So we can now carry a lot more, a lot more data than we, previ uh, than we previously used to. And it just so happens that electronic wires, they heat up a lot, so they waste a lot of energy. But these photonic cables, they don't waste a lot of energy. So there is a very good reason of using photonic cables instead of using electronic interconnects. And if you think about it, we are already using photonic interconnects in our daily life. If you see the Wi-Fi module placed at your home, these yellow cables that you see, they are not electronic cables. They are optical cables. And that's why you are able to enjoy all this 5G and 6G data on your mobile phone. At least one of the reasons that you are able to enjoy all this 5G and 6G connections, such high speed connections, such very high quality YouTube videos. But it's one thing to launch light on this thick optical fiber. But it's altogether a different game, altogether, it's altogether a different challenge to launch light on a chip where the device size is as thick as one strand of your hair. So what scientists decided, of course, because scientists and engineers are pretty smart people, so they came, they came up with very unique ways of launching light into, into these tiny devices. For example, you can take a very broad light, taper it down, and then launch into this chip. And how we are able to imprint all that electronic information onto this light is actually fairly simple to understand. Consider this. Let's say if I'm lighting a torch at you, when the electronic bit is zero, I will switch off the torch. When the electronic bit is one, I will switch on the torch. So what I'm doing is that I'm using a property of light, in this case, the brightness, for the electronic information to piggyback onto the optical signals. Now brightness is just one of the many properties of light. Light has so many different properties. It has polarization, it has mode, it has altogether a different sets of free degrees of freedom that we can use to launch a lot of information. All these degrees of freedom could be used to imprint the electronic information so that we can increase our data carrying capacity. Now that we have electronics and photonics together, the combination of these two things, the amalgamation of these two things, will make these chips even more powerful, way, way more powerful than we could ever imagine. But as someone has said, with great power comes a greater responsibility. And in this context, the responsibility is asking how exactly we are going to use this technology for the benefit of society. Now, there are ample ways we can use this amalgamation of electronics and photonics for the benefit of society. Consider this. Let's say if we put these chips onto a self-driving car so that the cars could see. These chips, once fitted in inside the self-driving cars, can send out quick pulses of light. And when these quick pulses of light, they reflect back from the surrounding, we can measure the time that it takes for the reflection. Combined with the properties of the reflected light, we can create the entire 3D map of the surrounding of the car. We, we will know where exactly the potholes lie, we will know where exactly are the pedestrians. We will know where the road is bending, where are the buildings, just about everything. So this chip will, enab will enable the self-driving cars to see the roads. And in this way, it could make your driving experience more safer, faster, and smarter. Or think about remote connectivity. There are people, un underconnected people living in mountainous regions, islands, deserts where the critical number of people is not so much that it doesn't make a lot of economical sense to lay down all this optical fiber, electronic cables, to lay down all this infrastructure. So these underconnected people, they remain underconnected. They don't have any high speed connectivity available to them. In this case, what we can do is that we can place this chip strategically at different locations. And because these chips could communicate with the help of light, we don't need all these electronic cable, optical cables. We can connect these underconnected people with the mainstream society. So we can help bridge all this digital divide using these chips. Or let's say that there is a, some kind of calamity happening, some war or earthquake is going on. So even though you had some sort of connection available, but because of the earthquake or because of the war, 
this connection has been broken. In this case, this chip can again pitch in and it can help reconnect those victims with, for example, the rescue team. So even though there was some connection available because it's broken, in a very temporary fashion, this chip can connect these two, these, um, these two entities, for example, the rescue team and the victims. So one thing is for certain, with so many applications, when you combine electronic and photonics, the future is bright. But it is bright for those who don't consider photons just as particles, but also as partners to build the next generation of technology. And maybe, just maybe, the next big invention in photonics will come from someone sitting in this audience or watching this video. Someone who knows how to bend light to their will. Thank you so much.